there is the putting away and there is what they call giving a bill of divorcement. Putting away is separation. Giving a bill of divorcement is the proper divorce. When you are separated, you are not divorced. Some couples separate so that they can work on the marriage. Sometimes they come together. In fact, in counseling, we call it controlled separation. So you are separated, but we are working with the counselor. So separation is not divorce. You can separate and come back. When you are separated, you can remarry because you are still in one marriage. That's what Jesus means that when you separate and go and remarry, you are committing adultery. Because you are not divorced. And you, if you go and marry somebody that is just separated and not divorced, you are also committing adultery because the person is not properly what? Divorced. That was Jesus said, whosoever puts away his wife and marries another commits adultery. What does it mean to put away your wife? Putting away your wife is not separation. It's not. That's not what it means. Putting away your wife at the best is synonymous with divorce. Now, technically speaking, putting away your wife is actually after the act of divorce, not before it. It, it. That's if you want to actually be faithful to scripture. It is after you have given your wife a bill of divorcement that you put her away. Putting away is the way that you bring to a closure the process of divorce. Putting away is not something you do before divorce. It's actually what you do after divorce. All right. Uh, we want to consider the topic called divorce. Of course, if you have looked at this video, the introduction we just shared, you know that these two ministers are talking about divorce. And what we want to, con we want to consider these two dissenting opinions from these two renowned ministers and in attempt to find a better balance on what the scripture is saying uh, as well i've not come here to either to condemn one minister or to, i just want you all to be the judge so what we want to do basically is just to see what they say and as well we'll look into the scripture and try to take it calmly you know ask ourselves questions by so doing we can be able to find balance and to know for sure what the scripture what is the position of the scripture when it comes to divorce so we'll be considering some few things which are first of all want to see is it possible does it by the scripture is it permitted for a believer to remarry after divorce okay we also want to consider if it is permitted for a christian to marry after divorce what are the grounds on what ground should a christian even go into divorce you know somebody might want to ask why are you doing this trying to criticize men of god and all of that or bring comparison between these two ministers i'm not trying to bring any form of comparison or trying to criticize any minister but you have to understand something for every false doctrine that finds its way into the root of christianity it has every tendency to be used of the devil to destroy the foundation of the truth which we hold dear I'm also, um, there was a time whereby a particular teaching was being peddled by a well revered minister of God in the West. What was this teaching? He made mention, is, there was this teaching that said going around as of that time that man is a spirit that has a soul and that lives in the body. Now, of course, if you are a good student of the scripture, you understand that position of the scripture is not true what actually happened is this there's this sect of people that we call the hyper grace believer they capitalize on that teaching unknowingly or subtly capitalize on that teaching that and so they're teaching things like this if man is a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body so what it means is this whatsoever i do with my body does not matter because i mean i'm a spirit so everything that matters is as long as I am regenerated in the spirit, so every other thing that I do with my body does not matter. And this teaching went on and on, giving room to a whole lot of lasciviousness. And that is why even to now, this doctrine of hyper grace, once saved, forever saved, they all have their rooting on this teaching. Once, you know, they have their, their, they have their root on this teaching that man is a spirit that has a soul that lives in the body so whatever i do with my spirit whatever i do with my body does not matter once i'm safe i am safe 
and because of that we have had a whole lot of division not just division we've had people living in heightened level of immorality because of this teaching so whenever a doctrine comes into the body of christ and it goes unchecked it gives room there is always a ripple effect for every false doctrine that we permit and that is the reason why we, we, f- we feel it is necessary to always bring clarity in this area and of course i'm not the person giving out an opinion i just have two ministers with dissenting views so what we would do is to see what they are saying try to compare it with the scripture just like i said I allow you to be the judge we just try to expose one or two things from our own observation and then allow you to be the judge as usual i will always say please use the comment section in case you have something you want to say in case you have something you want to share please make sure make sure to use the comment section again speaking of um pastor kinsley okonkwo there are some words which he said which i believe are contradicting to himself that is to say he said something that contradicts his own words i just want you to stick around to the end of this video there are more gist you will get to find out those words which pastor kisley himself said which contradicts his own work jesus never said you can't remarry when you are divorced i don't know where people even got it from so what confuses people is that jesus said if you put away your wife and you go and remarry you are committing adultery so in that chapter and in everywhere jesus spoke about divorce there are two words in fact just leave that verse for me and i say unto you whosoever shall do what Put away his wife, except for what? Fornication. And shall do what? Marry another. Committed what? Adultery. And whosoever shall do what? Put away. And marry her which is put away. Do it commit what? So there are two things mentioned in both the Jewish law, in Moses' law, and that Jesus even was reiterating in this chapter. There is the putting away, and there is what they call giving a bill of divorcement. Putting away is separation. Giving a bill of divorcement is the proper divorce. When you are separated, you are not divorced. Some couples separate so that they can work on the marriage. Sometimes they come together. In fact, in counseling, we call it controlled separation. So you are separated, but we are working with the counselor. So separation is not divorce. You can separate and come back. When you are separated, you can remarry because you are still in one marriage. That's what Jesus means that when you separate and go and remarry, you are committing adultery because you are not divorced. And if you go and marry somebody that is just separated and not divorced, you are also committing adultery because the person is not properly what? Divorced. That's what it means. The Greek word putting away is um, apeleo, and the Greek word um, bill of divorcement is apestatos. They are two different words. But because sometimes some Bible translations makes it, they interchange it, it looks like putting away and bill of divorcement are the same thing. They are not the same thing. The Bible is clear that once you divorce someone, you can remarry. Explained in this scripture is this, that there is an aspect called the putting away, there is a section called the putting away according to his own interpretation of the scripture. There is a section called the putting away. And there is also one called the bill of divorcement. And that the putting away is the point whereby the couple separates. In Matthew 5, 31 and 32, said, It had been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife. Now, it said, Whosoever shall put away his wife. Um, let it give her a writing of divorcement. So listen carefully. Whosoever shall put away his wife, this is verse 31, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Those are two different things. You will see this as we go on. There is the putting away and there is a writing of divorcement. The putting away is separation. So um, if a couple has an issue, the first stage usually is separation. Nobody divorces in one day. If you know anything about divorce, you can't, you, you can't say, I have an issue with my wife today, and lawyer comes today, judge comes today, everybody comes today, and we write divorcement. It doesn't happen that way. We usually, we first separate. Now, sometimes when people separate, um, they might be able to reconcile and come back. And some other time from the separation, they now properly do a legal process or traditional process or any process necessary to divorce. So there's a point where there is final divorce, and there's a point where there's separation. So the Bible is very clear about these two um, things. But what has happened over the years is that people generally, um, um, you know, interchange the uses. So this is where people came about the doctrine or the idea that Jesus said you cannot remarry if you are divorced. So that's what happened. It's not so at all. Please follow the details. I hope this is making sense to you, but please follow the details. So let's read that one again. It had been said that whosoever shall put away his wife, comma, that's one step. Let him give her a writing of divorcement. That's second step. Two different steps. One is separation, putting away separation. Writing of divorcement is the proper divorce. So if you look at now verse 32, it says, 
But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. So see what they're saying. They're saying in verse 32, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. Now fornication um, includes any sexual uncleanness. In the Bible days, um, that fornication means any sexual uncleanness, any sexual immorality. So what they are saying is that um, when they started divorce, one of the conditions they gave for divorce is if there is sexual immorality, you are free to put away your wife, separation, and now later divorce. It's one of the conditions. So that's what Jesus was reiterating here. He says, whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for fornication, is causing that woman to get separated and go and, um, you know, or have something else because she's not divorced, she's just separated. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. This is important. That whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for, the only reason you can put away your wife is for fornication. And putting away, remember, is not divorced at that time. It's just putting away. He said, without that, you are just setting that woman up for failure. So he said, according to his own interpretation, that what Jesus meant is this. When a couple remarries at the point of the separation or putting away according to him, that is when such couple can be seen or seen as committing fornication or committing adultery. But when they are properly divorced, such couple can go ahead to remarry. That is in his word. When they are properly divorced, such couple can go ahead and remarry. But I want us to just read that same scripture which he explained because he didn't read it to the full end. So I want us to read it and then we can see how what he just said contradicted the scripture or the scripture contradicted what Pastor Kingsley explained. Now, Matthew 5 verse 30, Matthew chapter 5 from verse 32. Jesus said, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. That is one. Then the second aspect, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Let's take that ending part again. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery but remember what pastor christie what pastor kinsley explained is this that when couples are properly divorced they can go ahead to remarry and he now brought a dimension in trying to separate putting away and bill of divorcement as two separate things which in true sense the putting away is the actual divorcement the putting away is the is the is the time whereby the 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 putting away is the actual divorcement why the bill of divorcement is just a kind of a paper to legalize what has been done it's just more like a, i mean that is just simple a bill of divorcement it's just like making that making that process official by the law it's just like when somebody marries you have already married and then they now give you they now give you a marriage certificate so that marriage certificate is just what satisfy the fact that this person is married the same thing the bill of divorcement here satisfy that these people have divorced so in trying to segregate this this scripture by saying there's something called the putting away and there's another aspect called the bill of divorcement. And that the putting away is separation. Quite all right, there is such a thing called separation in marriage, but it is not the putting away. Jesus is very clear that whosoever shall, ma shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery. So that putting away is the actual divorcement. Because if it's not so, 
Jesus will not go ahead to retaliate and says, Whosoever shall marry her that is divorced. Is this the same scenario Jesus is explaining? If you put her away, sake for the cause of fornication, you have caused her to commit adultery. To, you have caused her to commit adultery, yes. And the person that marries this one that has been put away, the person that marries this one that has been put away, but in this time, Jesus did not, in this aspect, they didn't use put away. They used, whosoever shall marry he that is divorced, committed adultery. But the pastor here just said, when couples are properly divorced, they can go ahead to remarry. Can't you see this actually contradicts itself? So I want us to also listen to another you know, a more renowned minister. I am not a pastor, but I want us to listen to Reverend Gideon Odoma, also giving, throwing more light on this aspect. After you have given your wife a bill of divorcement that you put her away, putting away is the way that you bring to a closure the process of divorce. Putting away is not something you do before divorce. It's actually what you do after divorce. Hello? Matthew chapter 19. What does the Bible say? Verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So they are asking whether you can put away your wife. And, you know, they will do uh, Greek. I, I was told that there was some Greek job being done also. So let's do Greek. All right? Is it lawful to put away your wife? So, is Apollo, that's Apollo, to put away. And you can, let's read the meaning of Apollo from the Greek dictionary. To set free, to let go, dismiss, to detain no longer. A petitioner to whom liberty departs is given by a decisive answer. To bid depart, send away, to let go free, release a, a captive, B, to acquit one accused of a crime and set him at liberty. C, indulge, indulge gently to grant a prisoner leave to depart. D, to release a debtor. Number four, use of divorce, to dismiss from the house, to repudiate. The wife of a Greek or Roman may divorce her husband. So the meaning of Apollo in the context of marriage is used of divorce. 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 That's from the Greek. Since we want to do Greek, right? That's from the Greek. Now, but that's not all. Jesus answered in verse 4 and said unto them, Have you not read that, which, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall the man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away he didn't say why then did moses say to put her away and to give her a writing of divorcement is you give the writing of divorcement and apollo is the same word you can check your greek so that you give the writing of divorcement according to moses then you put away so putting away is not separation. Putting away is actually how you actualize a divorce. When you have legally served divorce papers and the divorce has been ratified, the way that you practically carry it out is what the Bible calls putting away. So putting away is not legal separation or illegal separation or whatever, whatever separation. It isn't. Putting away is actually... It's even, it's even beyond divorce. It's after divorce, not before divorce. So the best you can do to minimize it is to use it as a synonym for divorce. It can't be any less than that, which is what you see going on here. So when they are saying, 
uh, can the man put away his wife for any cause? It, they are looking at the end of the process. They are not talking about uh, separation. You think that they are asking Jesus, can a man separate from his wife for every cause? Do you think that's the question they were asking? No, talk back to me. You think that they came to Jesus to ask him about separation? When Jesus gave them the answer, they said, well, if you are trying to say that there is no room for putting away, why did Moses tell us to give a bill of divorcement? Oh, so you need to give a bill of divorcement in order to put away. 